You want a war? You're gonna get one. Forget the lies, the money. We're in this together and through it all. They said that nothing's forever. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to December 8th, 1997. We're also live tonight from Portland, Maine, while Nitro comes live from Buffalo, New York. D-Generation X in your house is in the books and Shawn Michaels is still WWF Champion. Check out the video I uploaded on the channel if you want to find out what happened in every match. Over on the WCW side, we're truly on the road to Starcade 1997 and we're going to learn about a few more pay-per-view matches on this week's show. Let's get started with our opening matches and promos and let's see who wins this week's episode of Reliving the War. Before we begin though, we have another Jam Up guy to celebrate this week. You may have heard of him, it's Alex Wright. The WASI channel on YouTube, Wrestling Shoot Interviews, brought up Reliving the War to Alex and although he hadn't seen an episode at the time the interview took place, he did say thank you for featuring him on the series. And a lot of people have come to sort of reappreciate you uh, okay. through these reviews, so a lot of people wanted to, uh, me to ask oh, your opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much on Wrestling Bios. <laughs> there you go. Right, Wrestling Bios. A few days later, it looks like Alex watched an episode and it also looks like he enjoyed it. So, a big thanks to Daz Wunderkind and I think I speak for most viewers here when I say we loved your character on Nitro and still do to this day. It brings us a lot of joy. Alex currently owns and runs New European Championship Wrestling. They have a VOD section on their website too if you want to see some grops from Germany. So, please, show Alex some support and check out newwrestling.de. All right, let's get started. Vince McMahon's back inside arenas and he has something to say about last night's IC title match. On Nitro, we start this week's show with a Ray Trailer vs Conan match. On Nitro, the commentators talk about the lack of communication from Sting regarding his match with Hogan, and the boys hope Sting does something tonight to let everyone know how he feels about his upcoming Starcade main event. Don't worry lads, Sting's gonna play a big part in tonight's episode of Nitro. It's been a while since Conan's wrestled on Monday nights and it's good to see him back in the ring. k Dog's in no rush to start this match though, and he's having some fun with Ray and the fans before the bell rings. Trailer hits a splash in the corner and Conan takes a big ol' uppercut. Conan then takes a power slam as Tony Schiavone lets us know that Disco Inferno gets another shot at the TV title tonight on Nitro. Conan then takes a break on the outside to plan out his next steps. So far, he's been getting his ass kicked. Conan pulls Trailer out of the ring and after trading a few punches, the former big boss man gets thrown into the ring post and back in the ring, Trailer catches Conan in the corner but Conan counters with a reverse DDT. Trailer then gets sent from one corner to the other and it looks like Conan may have Trailer's number in this one, but then the lights go out in the arena. The crowd pops as the lights stay off and everyone's thinking this has to be Sting. The lights come back on and Conan's out cold. Nobody knows what happened, not even Ray Trailer. But but he's gonna take the pinfall win anyway and get himself out of the ring ASAP. Looks like the NWO may have a few problems on tonight's episode of Nitro. Vince McMahon gets booed by the audience during his entrance. This is the episode where Vince realizes he's now a bad guy thanks to what happened at Survivor Series, and we're going to see him embrace his inner heel very slowly over the next few months. McMahon says there's no denying the popularity of Stone Cold Steve Austin, but Austin's been getting away with murder. If assaulting officials and announcers wasn't bad enough, Austin decided to drive his pickup truck into the arena last night and he endangered the fans around ringside while also using his vehicle as a weapon against his opponents. Stone Cold gave the referee a stunner last night and that referee was going to disqualify Austin until another referee came down to the ring. Therefore, and this is important, Vince McMahon, for the first time ever on TV, is gonna demand a match. Tonight, Stone Cold will face The Rock on Raw. 
Austin comes to the ring and he can't believe McMahon just ordered him to do something. Austin does what he wants when he wants and he doesn't care who McMahon is or who he thinks he is. McMahon then says he's the proud owner of the World Wrestling Federation and furthermore, Vince McMahon is Austin's boss. When Austin says he doesn't give a damn, McMahon says there will be consequences if Stone Cold doesn't do what he's told, and something else McMahon wants to bring up to Stone Cold is his use of bad language. I'm trying to apologize. I'm trying to apologize. Jesus Christ, give me a chance. Stone Cold says he's gonna go to the back, drink a few beers, eat a few hot dogs, and he'll have a think about competing in the ring tonight. Austin won his match fair and square at DX, but he'll let McMahon think about those consequences while Stone Cold himself contemplates his next steps. Austin says if he comes back out later tonight, someone will get their ass whipped. It could be Jim Ross, it could be an official, it could even be Vince McMahon himself. These two were so good together and they never miss when cutting promos against each other. Very interesting seeing the crowd boo McMahon though and Vince McMahon had no problems whatsoever embracing it. Today's video is brought to you by DraftKings. WWE's biggest event of the summer is this weekend. To celebrate this historic event, DraftKings, an official gaming partner of WWE, has $25,000 up for grabs. Here's what you need to do. Download the DraftKings app, make sure you sign up using promo code BIOS and enter DraftKings free to play SummerSlam pool. Answer questions like who's going to make a surprise appearance at the event and who's going to walk away victorious, and the players with the most correct answers will get their share of the $25,000 in prizes that's up for grabs this weekend. So if you think you're good at predicting what's going to happen at WWE events, then this is for you. Download the DraftKings app now and make sure you use promo code BIOS to enter the free WWE prediction challenge with $25,000 up for grabs this weekend. Only at DraftKings, an official gaming partner of WWE. Hello, my Ma, what's this? That's gum! Straight from Lawler's mouth! The king ah! is the karate ah! fighter's champion! The tribunal has stripped Jerry Lawler of his title and crowned Sonny, 1997, Milton Bradley, karate fighter's champion! My sacrifice! The Legion of Doom take on the Godwins next on Raw, while on Nitro we've got Big Mongo vs the Barbarian. Steve manages to par out of the Barbarian's side headlock and he delivers a jumping shoulder block. A few kicks in the corner follows, the two then trade clotheslines with Barbarian getting the better of Mongo, and Big Steve gets kicked out of the ring where Barbie continues to bring the pain. Things aren't looking too good for Big Mongo. Back in the ring the Barbarian impresses with a pump handled suplex and McMichael eats a super combo in the corner. The Barbarian then goes upstairs but Mongo counters the aerial attack with a big old slap on the belly welly. Mike Tanay called it an open palm thrust, I call it a slap on the belly welly. Barbarian was offended by the slap and Mongo goes down after <laughs> Mongo goes down after a chop. I love watching Steve bump so so much. The match then ends kinda abruptly with Steve kicking Barbarian in the belly welly and we see the Mongo spike. Jimmy Hart then calls for backup after the three count. Mongo punches Jimmy off the apron but Knight in shining armor Ming catches the damsel in distress. The man they call Ming then gets inside the ropes. He and Mongo throw wild punches at each other and just when Steve thought he had it all under control, we see the Tongan death grip. Nobody, fucking nobody, not Mongo, not Glacier, not Jesus Christ himself can withstand the pain of the Tongan death grip. Over on Raw, yay, LOD vs the Godwins. Road Dog and Billy Gunn come to the ring with Phineas and Henry and they're wearing bootleg South Park shirts. South Park was just in its first season and everyone was talking about it. While Road Dog and Billy Gunn looked pretty shifty on the outside, they did not interfere in the match. Someone else who looked a little shifty was this guy right here with his clever and witty sign. That's the face of a man who means what he says, ladies. Animal ends up getting clotheslined out of the ring, he gets thrown into the ring steps and... Uh oh, you're fucked now lads. Road Warrior Hawk ends up taking a pile driver and in classic Road Warrior Hawk fashion, he no sells it. So a choke slam and a tombstone pile driver follows and Hawk ain't getting up after that. Kane and Paul Bear get out of the ring and they head to the back, leaving Hawk all alone to take a kick in from Billy Gunn and the Road Dog. Animal eventually chases the tag champs away with a steel chair and then we go to commercial break. 
Billy Gunn takes on Dude Love on Raw, and on Nitro, Prince Ikea tries his luck against Dean Malenko. Before the Nitro match, we have two very quick interviews conducted by Mean Gene. Gene wants to know how Disco feels about being embarrassed by Jackie back at Halloween Havoc, and how does he feel about the lack of respect the locker room shows him due to this loss. Disco says the Halloween Havoc match was a no-win situation for him, and there was no way he could win that match no matter what he did. And as for the boys making fun of him, Disco invites anyone in the locker room to come say it to his face. The Inferno's fed up with people talking behind his back. Buff Bagwell then came out and he said, Everyone's talking about Lex Luger, but last week the total package didn't show Buff much in the ring. Bagwell says he's been held back on Monday nights, and that ends tonight. Bagwell challenges Luger to a rematch tonight on Monday Night Raw. Bagwell says Luger can't beat him tonight because he's Buff and he's in Buffalo. Fantastic. Prince Ikea thinks he's a big shot now after beating Yuji Nagata last week, but the Iceman Dean Malenko put the Prince right in his place in our next matchup. Eddie Guerrero once again provided commentary for this bout and he called Dean a crybaby. Dean still blames Eddie for losing the US title and Eddie went on to call Dean Malenko boring, asking fans to imagine having dinner or watching a movie with Malenko. A double underhook powerbomb followed by the Texas Cloverleaf was the wake-up call Prince Ike had needed, and our match ends with a submission. On Raw, Billy Gunn and Road Dogg stuck around to cut a promo, and Jesse James says the champs have just proven that there's no competition in the WWF Tag Team division. Road Dogg and Billy Gunn sing goodbye to the OLD, and James says the tag champs are just going to have to have singles matches. An open challenge gets issued for anyone to step into the ring with Billy Gunn, and Dude Love answers the call. Gunn attacks Foley before before the dudester can get in the ring and the road dog has some fun at the commentary table at Foley's expense. Forgot to mention too that this is the first Raw to feature Michael Cole on commentary. Dude tries to fight back in the ring but he gets choked on the top rope. Dude then goes down after a clothesline but a gunner splash misses its mark. Foley delivers a backdrop, he bounces Billy's head off the top turnbuckle, he warms up the band but gun counters sweet shin music. Billy performs the famouser, Billy mocks Dude Love with a little dance. But Dude Love ducks a clothesline and he nails Gun with his double arm DDT. Dude Love wins via pinfall. After the bout, the road dog smacks Foley on the head with a steel chair. Looked quite brutal, didn't it? The tag belts get placed over Foley's head and Billy hits Mick with a top rope leg drop. He didn't get all of it, but still, the message was sent. I think it's good that they're making a big deal out of these guys, by the way. I said this before, but the WWF tag team division did need a little work. We have got two promos next on Raw with The Rock and Takamichi Noku. On Nitro, the Giant's got a few things to say. The NWO paid for some airtime, and Kevin Nash says that the Giant only went looking for Big Sexy when Giant knew Nash was hurt. The Giant didn't try to go after Nash six months ago, and Nash says that he's the true Giant of pro wrestling, while the guy that calls himself the Giant is one dimensional. To prove his point, Kevin challenges the Giant to a match at Starcade, and Kevin says the Giant will be the biggest slam ever to go to slaughter. The Giant comes to the ring and he says he is one dimensional, but being one dimensional is all he needs. Giant may still have a busted up hand, but he promises to still show up at Starcade for the Giant vs Giant match. The big man says he's gonna bring a surprise with him too, the choke slam. It's not a surprise if you tell us what it is there lad, now Big Kev knows your whole battle plan. So yeah, Kevin Nash vs the Giant at Starcade. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? Yeah, well, don't get your hopes up. On Raw, The Rock's standing backstage with the nation, and Rocky says no one in their right mind wants to face him, and that's why Austin's a little hesitant tonight. Rock says he showed everyone last night why it's not all about Austin 316, but it's all about Rock 911, because that's exactly what Austin needed after getting his ass kicked. Rock guarantees that the People's Champion will leave Raw tonight with the Intercontinental belt. We then see a clip of Jim Ross trying to teach Takamichi Noku a few important English words and English sayings. Srabnaka. One more time, you almost got it. Srabnaka. That's very good. Srabnaka. Brian Christopher lost his mind backstage last night at D-Generation X after losing the Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament, but Jim Cornette says there's a new number one contender for the title. Cornette's just about to make the announcement, but he's interrupted by Jerry Lawler, and Lawler says Takamichi Noku isn't the true Light Heavyweight Champion. Taka stole the belt last night, and the only reason Taka's here is because there's too many people in Japan already. Jerry says in Japan, a woman gives birth to a baby every four 
seconds and the king's gonna go to Japan, find that woman and put a stop to it. Uh, Jerry says Taka shouldn't be in the United States, Taka needs to speak English if he wants to stay in America, and he certainly needs to speak English if he wants to be a champion. Jerry asks Taka if he speaks a single word of English, and Taka tells the king, go fuck yourself homeboy. Nah, only kidding, he calls the king a jackass. Jerry wants to fight, but there's no time for that. Here comes the number one contender for the light heavyweight belt. Jeez, I wonder who it could be. This is El Unico from South of the Border, and Jerry Lawler talks some smack to this newcomer by saying he's another illegal alien, and Brian Christopher is the true champion. Lawler gets shoved, the king says he's happy to go two on one with these guys, but El Unico attacks Takamichi Noku. I was so surprised by the reveal that I almost shit myself, it's Bran Christopher. Taka ends up taking a spike pile driver, another pile driver from Christopher, and another one from Lawler. Poor Taka gets annihilated, and we can all assume that Christopher's next in line for a light heavyweight title shot. Flash Funk takes on Kurgan on Raw, while Chris Benoit takes on Lodi on Nitro. So this was again supposed to be Raven vs Benoit, but this newcomer's gonna take Raven's spot instead. Raven isn't even sitting with the flock today. Thanks Raven for fucking showing up this week. Tony Schiavone calls this guy Lodi before getting corrected on the headset. And man, you really don't want to wrestle Chris Benoit in your first match. Benoit decided to do a knife edge chop speed run on this blue chipper. Yeah, Lodi had no chance. Benoit taunts the flock as he beats the hell out of WCW's hottest new prospect. A superplex, diving headbutt, and crippler crossface secures Benoit the victory, and it looks like the flock couldn't care less about their fallen comrade. Chris grabs a mic and he says, quote the crippler nevermore. He challenges Raven to come down to the ring, but he doesn't show up. Chris then says Raven speaks about being a victim, but Raven should step into the ring and find out what being abused and being victimized is all about. Yeah, it's it's one of those Benoit promos that age like milk. On Raw, the interrogator has been renamed Kurgan the interrogator. Soon enough, it'll just be Kurgan. The Jackal's got a new look too. He's rocking some jewelry on his dome, and I'm guessing he's now done with those Truth Commission jokers. We've got a game of cat and mouse at the start of this one, classic Tom and Jerry shit, but this time Tom actually catches Jerry and he takes his head off with a clothesline. On commentary, the Jackal says the corporate nitwits in Connecticut got it all wrong. Kurgan wasn't allowed to be a giant, a bloodthirsty animal, and so the Jackal is not now unleashing Kurgan to do his bidding. Okay. Kurgan ends it with a claw. Not just any claw though. He slams Flash Funk to the mat while the claw's locked in, and gotta say, this looked good. The ref calls for the bell and the jackal gets in the ring for a closer look. Ghost Recon and Sniper Elite get in the ring too to stop this absolute madman, and their efforts are absolutely pathetic. The Jackal turns his back on Recon and Sniper, his big curry man pushes his, I guess, former teammates away. And because Kurgan won't let go of the claw, the referee reverses his decision and Flash Funk wins via DQ. To stop Kurgan, the Jackal slaps him across the face, they then both laugh. I mean, I want to know the joke too, because I don't find this funny one bit. Recon and Sniper watch these two absolute stoners from the sidelines before Raw moves on to its next segment. We're now entering the Warzone portion of the show. We've got some promos next. Degeneration X on Raw, Nature Boy Ric Flair on Nitro. Flair says Starcade's just around the corner and he's betting on Sting beating Hogan. Flair then says the Steiners are going to take down the Outsiders. Uh, the Steiners aren't wrestling the Outsiders at Starcade, Slick Rick, jeez. And Flair… <laughs> Flair says he has no idea what the Macho Man's doing at the pay per view. Yeah, clearly Rick. Flair says he was there for the first Starcade and he wants to see the big cage again. He wants a match with Kurt Hennig at WCW's biggest show ever. Blood, sweat and guts. Two guys walk in, one guy walks out, and at an event like Starcade, Flair promises the man walking out of the cage will be Nature Boy Ric Flair. Mean Gene wants Flair's opinion on Bret Hart joining the NWO, and Flair talks directly to Bret. The Nature Boy says the hitman made the mistake of calling himself the greatest of all time, and that's easy to do when you've got your own newspaper column in your own hometown. 
Flair invites Brett to Charlotte, North Carolina, and Flair's gonna show Brett who the man is. Flair thinks Brett joined the NWO as a way to avoid Flair himself. Rick says that he's the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. So it looks like we might see a Flair vs Brett rivalry on WCW television. If only Brett would get involved in that steel cage match that doesn't happen. Also, Nitro is in Charlotte next week. Over on Raw, we see a clip of Ken Shamrock after his match at In Your House and he's all pissed off. Shamrock had Sean right where he wanted him, but then HBK's goons jumped in. Shamrock says if he has to enter the Royal Rumble and beat 29 other guys for another shot at Michaels, then that's exactly what he's gonna do. Back in the war zone, DX have a table, chairs, and a few ice cold beverages in the ring. Triple H called Sergeant Slaughter pathetic, and he says Triple H is too much man for both Slaughter and Mrs. Slaughter. This is getting a bit old already, isn't it? HBK says the world's most dangerous man was schooled last night at D-Generation X. For those keeping score at home, HBK is still the European champion and a three-time WWF champion. He's the only Grand Slam winner in the World Wrestling Federation, and he can't stop fucking and looking at himself on the Titan Tron. Either he loves himself or he's super paranoid, maybe both. Someone tried to rain on DX's parade last night though, and that was Owen Hart. Sean says the Hart family, together, are like one big, huge, nasty, smelly, smoking, stinking turd. <laughs> and when you look down the toilet and you see a turd like that, the first thing you think is, good god, somebody please flush that. Yeah, Sean thinks somebody else should flush it and not him, but Sean says he thought DX done the WWF a favour by flushing the Hart Foundation down the commode, but the thing is, you flush that turd away, but but one little small chunky nugget always comes back to the surface. You can flush all you want, but that little shit nugget keeps coming back. Owen Hart is that little shit nugget. HBK thinks Owen's in the arena tonight and he and DX aren't leaving the ring until someone drags him out. So DX are gonna play a few games of poker. Remember when Sean promised everyone that he would walk out naked on TV the night after Survivor Series? Well, China thinks this should be a game of strip poker seeing as Michaels didn't do what he promised. HBK takes a seat, he drinks some Jack straight from the bottle, and DX are going to continue their game as the next competitors make their way down to the ring. The DOA take on Los Bariquas next on Raw while Randy Savage battles Hugh Morris on Nitro. You wanna stick with Raw here, don't you? <laughs> yeah, okay. So the Dirty Ol' Assholes might have to look at Triple H's Dirty Ol' Asshole as the poker game continues during the match. Insane how a game of poker on the outside instantly makes a DOA vs Bariquas match more interesting. It's Apple and Skull against Miguel Perez and Jose. Jim Ross incorrectly says it's Jose and Jesus. A pretty standard back and forth match, but on the outside, HBK's losing the poker game. Neither tag team bothers DX, and DX doesn't bother the DOA or the Bariquas. Savio ends up jumping in and whacking Skull with a 2x4 right on the knee, and this allowed Los Bariquas to pick up the win. And after the bout, Savio even gave Sean a big old thumbs up. HBK China and Triple H couldn't care less, though, they're more concerned about the cameraman looking at their cards. After the match, DX bring their table back in the ring and the poker game continues. Triple H has lost his shirt while HBK is down to his briefs. The headbangers come out for their scheduled tag team match and these guys aren't going to be as passive as the DOA or the Bariquas. Mosh and Thrasher flip the card table, so HBK smashes a jug over Mosh's head. DX destroy the headbangers. Sean hits Mosh with chair shots while Triple H takes care of Thrasher. Thrasher ends up getting powerbombed through the table and check this out. HBK pours Jack all over Thrasher, and Thrasher opens his mouth to get some of that sweet, sweet JD. Good man. Hunter chokes Mosh with a steel chair while Sean flicks his balls. And <laughs> he flicked his own balls, he didn't flick Mosh's balls. <laughs> Sean then tells Hunter to get on the other turnbuckle to pose in front of the hard camera. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't guess anybody's but Hunter remembers the next spot doesn't involve any posing. Triple H redirects Sean to where he needs to be, and then Owen Hart shows up. Owen jumps in the ring, he attacks Sean, and then he quickly leaves again through the audience. Owen has once again got one up on DX. Would make you think that Owen's maybe getting a title shot against Sean at the Royal Rumble, wouldn't it? 
Jim Kelly and Bruce Smith of the Buffalo Bills are sitting at ringside and Randy Savage decides to talk a little crap to these guys. Kelly and Smith end up attacking Macho with these big stupid smiles on their faces and Morris ends up pulling Savage away before sending Macho back in for another few weak shots, at least the boys were having fun. When the match gets in the ring Morris does a little damage in the corner but that doesn't last too long, he misses a corner splash and Randy sends Morris out of the ring. Morris gets rammed into the steps but back inside the ropes he manages to hit a power slam. Morris wiggles his analog stick in a circular motion to perform Macho's own finishing move against him, but Randy quickly taps the counter button and Morris misses his target. Macho slams Morris and he hits the elbow drop, but Randy isn't done yet. He goes back up and he hits another. He goes for the third elbow drop, but the lights go off in the arena again. If you look closely, you can see Sting in the ring and he's attacking Macho. The lights come back on, Randy's got a Sting mask on, the referee's down, Morris is still down, and the crowd's going nuts. The Stinger's definitely here tonight, but we'll have to wait and see if he'll confront Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Rick Rude and Eric Bischoff then approach the commentary team and Rude calls the commentators the three monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. Rude knows that WCW pays the commentators and WCW also pays the electricity bills. So Tanae, Shivani and Heenan must know who's fucking around with the lights during these sting attacks. Rude says if the lights go out again then these three monkeys will get taken out. And then, <laughs> and then Rude makes Tanae cover his eyes, Shivani cover his mouth and Heenan voluntarily covers his ears. They sit like this for around 10 seconds or so until Disco Inferno's music plays in the arena. Jeff Jarrett vs Vader is our next match on Raw while Disco Inferno gets another shot at the TV title. Disco isn't in the mood for dancing tonight, he's focused on winning the TV title and earning the respect of the locker room. Disco gets slammed by Saturn and Perry asks Disco if he'd like to leave the ring. Disco refuses, Perry slaps Disco, Disco slaps Perry back and Perry spears Disco out of his boots. After delivering a shoulder block, Saturn goes down after a drop toe hold and the Inferno drops a few forearms. Perry rolls out of the ring where he gets shoved into the ring steps and back inside the ropes, Disco's luck seemingly runs out after taking a stun gun. Disco takes a pump handle slam before Saturn goes to the top rope. Saturn misses a leg drop but Disco fails to capitalize. Both he and Saturn bump into each other in the corner. The two end up on the outside again where Disco manages to dump Saturn into the flock and Lodi takes a chart buster. Back in the ring, Disco tries to beat some respect out of Saturn but Perry counters a suplex with a neck breaker. Disco then takes another pump handle suplex. Saturn goes for a power bomb, but Disco counters with a chart buster and by god, Disco wins the TV title once again. The flock hit the ring but Disco escapes and he grabs the belt before leaving the arena. So there you go, Disco does it again. I wonder if the boys will now treat the Inferno with some respect backstage. The Jeff Jarrett vs Vader match then on Raw. So Vader comes to the ring after Jarrett and the two are ready to fight. Goldust music then plays in the arena and Goldust comes to the ringside area along with Luna. Goldust then flashes Vader and Vader wants a piece of that action so the big man chases Goldust back up the ramp and Jarrett wins via countout. So Jarrett's defeated The Undertaker and Vader back to back although he didn't pin or submit either guy. Let's just move on. The Buff Bagwell vs Lex Luger rematch is up next on Nitro and on Raw we've got Mark Merrow vs uh, Salvatore Sincere. Surprise this guy still has a job. Alright the Nitro match, remember I tried to predict exactly how the match would go last week? I got a few things wrong but this week Luger and Buff have the exact same match, the only difference is the finish. You'd think someone would suggest changing things up a bit seeing as they just wrestled last week but no, it's more or less the exact same layout with only a few small differences. Vincent is once again with Bagwell. Luger did get in a little more offense this time after Buff showed him up, but Buff went into the driver's seat after a short burst 
worst of offense from Flexi Lexi. Lex starts his comeback after delivering an electric chair drop. Big Scott Norton then showed up as Lex hits the bionic forearm. Buff rolls out of the ring and Lex ends up getting counted out because he was too busy dealing with Vincent and Norton. Buff celebrates the victory like he just won the world title, and yeah, could have done without this match really. On Raw, Salson Sears ready for his big comeback story, but it looks like Marvelous Mark Merrow isn't gonna wrestle tonight. He comes to the ring, he grabs a microphone, and he says last night he proved he's the greatest wrestler boxer in the world today. Butterbean looked like Uncle Fester on steroids after the Degeneration X Toughman contest, and Mark says tonight Vince McMahon wants him to wrestle a jobber, and Salvatore agrees, saying yes, I am a jobber, I am indeed, yes sir. Mero calls Salvatore a jabroni, a nobody. This isn't Salvatore sincere, this is Tom Brandy with a stupid gimmick that Tom went along with. Tom should have took the mic here and said, yeah, fuck up, Johnny B. Bad. Mero says he's gonna bring out somebody who can't do a Mero salt, somebody who hasn't won the IC title. Here comes the new and improved Sable, and she's in a spud sack because Sable just loves big sacks. Mero wants Sable to disrobe him, Sable thinks about it for a moment, and then she disrobes or de-sacks herself. Yeah, the fans lose their minds, and so does Marvelous Mark. He covers up Sable, but in the middle of all this, Jobber Sincere dropkicks Mero out of the ring. Mero decides that covering up Sable is more important than the match, so Mark and Sable go to the back and Sincere wins via countout. No matter what your opinion of this is now, back then, this did have fans talking, and uh, probably doing a lot more than what they'd care to admit. You know who you are, you dirty, dirty bastards. Alright main event time, Scott Hall vs DDP on Nitro and The Rock vs Austin scheduled for Raw. The Hall vs DDP match was booked by the WCW committee due to Rick Rude and Eric Bischoff's actions at the commentary table. Hall conducts his survey and it's one more for the good guys. A fan holds up his Undertaker cardboard cutout when DDP makes his way to the ring. And here we go, Diamond Dallas Page vs The Diamond Stud. Some toothpick and chewing gum action to start us off. Hall works over the shoulder and he grabs DDP by the hair to slam him to the mat. DDP gets a little payback shortly afterwards. The World War 3 winner finds himself in the corner where Dallas lays in the punches and Hall goes down after a big ride in the middle of the ring. The two then duck each other's clotheslines with Dallas eventually flooring Scott but Hall makes DDP pay with a corner clothesline. We see a bulldog from the bad guy and Paige then goes down after a fallaway slam but he kicks out at two. A discus punch puts Dallas back on the mat and Scott cheats while applying an abdominal stretch. Randy Anderson forcefully breaks the hold and Dallas gives Scott a taste of his own medicine but Hall counters with a hip toss. Scott signals for the outsider's edge, DDP counters with a back body drop, and Dallas then starts building his comeback with an inverted atomic drop and a lariat. Dallas drops Scott with a pancake, DDP signals for the diamond cutter, but surprise surprise, the NWO show up. Just like last week, DDP gets wrecked. He takes the outsider's edge as Hogan and Bischoff make their way down to the ring. But wait, here comes Sting, here comes- Oh fuck, not again. Hogan has a good laugh and he says Sting simply won't come out of hiding. Hogan is issued challenge after challenge but Hulk's arms and triceps scare the stinger off. Hulk puts over Scott Hall as the true winner tonight. He orders the boys to get the sting dummy out of the ring. The lads lift it up and they drape it over the top rope. Hogan talks a little more shit on the outside before going back to the mannequin, but check this out. <laughs> Even if you don't appreciate all this NWO stuff, and even if this build of Starcade is nowhere near as good as what you remember it to be, this was a pretty cool moment right here. Sting wipes out everyone in the ring, he hits the Scorpion Death Drop on Scott Hall, and Nitro fades to black as Hogan looks on with a concerned look on his face. The Rock comes to the ring not knowing if Austin's even going to bother showing up for this next match. Vince McMahon stands at ringside, and McMahon is visibly upset when Austin walks out not wearing his ring gear. Austin says he's ready to fight no matter what he's wearing, but he had his hot dogs in Steve Weiser's backstage, and Stone Cold decided he won't wrestle The Rock tonight. He already beat him last night at Degeneration X. Austin wants to know what the consequences are of his actions, and after Rock suggests that Austin gets fired, McMahon says he'll strip Austin of his title and hand it over to The Rock if Austin doesn't compete. Austin says he's been the IC champion already, he's been a tag team champion. There's only one title Austin's now interested in, and that's the WWF Championship. 
Austin doesn't want the IC title. Austin's happy to forfeit the belt in order to get to the WWF Championship. Austin then hands the Intercontinental belt to The Rock. He convinces Rock to shake his hand. And just when you think Austin's turned over a new leaf, he hits Rocky with a Stone Cold Stunner and he reminds Rock of one important thing. Don't trust anybody. Austin then steals the IC title. He tells Vince to grab a camera crew and send him with Stone Cold because Austin has plans for the belt next week. All we have to do is tune in, same Stone Cold time, same Stone Cold channel. So Austin is no longer the IC champion but he has possession of The Rock's IC belt. Austin leaves the ring but he runs back in to celebrate with the audience. Stone Cold then knocks Vince off the apron and we get to see a little of the Mr. McMahon character when Vince gets back to his feet. The Austin vs McMahon rivalry started long ago but if you want to pinpoint the moment where it really gets going, I'd say it's right here on this episode of Raw. Raw wins reliving the war this week. The DX antics and the Rock, Austin and McMahon stuff is simply too hard to beat right now. I enjoyed Nitro's ending with Sting surprising everyone and WCW did do a better job of building towards Starcade this week than what they did last week, but Raw was still better. It really feels like you never know what's gonna happen on Raw. Raw's now on 51 points, Nitro's on 47 and we still have 13 ties on the board. In the television ratings, Raw scores another 3.0 while Nitro goes up to a 4.3. A lot of people were watching pro wrestling and this is gonna grow big time as we enter 1998. Next week on Raw, The Undertaker talks about his upcoming match at the Raw Rumble. We learn the fate of The Rock's Intercontinental Championship, and Vince McMahon calls Owen Hart out to the ring. Should be a good one. On the WCW side, The Road to Starcade continues with another 3 hour episode of Nitro. They don't even announce these a week in advance anymore. Luger and Bagwell have another match to settle the score. Goldberg's in the arena looking for a fight, and. Brett the Hitman Hart has arrived! Oh, join me next week guys, you don't want to miss episode 112. Thanks for watching this week's episode though, and take care.